To talk about the resurrection today, I want to go back, back further, because salvation's story goes back further than the resurrection. The resurrection is the crucial event in salvation's story, but it has its start in time immemorial. And it started as God looked upon the world, and it was formless and void. And God had a dream. And so, in this dream, God said, let there be light. And it was so. And God created the sun and the moon and the stars, the lights to rule the day and night. And God said, it is good. And God continued to dream. And he dreamed of an earth that was not formless and void. And so God created the dividing line between the seas and the mountains, the, the ocean and the dry land. And God said, it's good. And God continued dreaming. And in the dreams along came the plants that covered the face of the earth and that were watered by the sweet rains that fell. And God said, it's good. And God created the animals that would eat the grass of the fields. All these different kinds of creatures. And the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. And God said, this is good. But the dream wasn't complete. The dream wouldn't be complete until God created a creature that could walk with God. And so God said, let's make people in our image free. Free to choose paths. Free to decide directions. And in the dream, God hoped that the direction that these people would choose would be the direction of walking with him. And so God created people in the holy image. And now God looked, this was on the sixth day, God looked at everything that had been made and didn't say, that's good. Didn't say, mm, yeah, I guess it will do. God said, look, it is very good. And as the dream is being lived out, there is incredible joy. Joy in God's part, joy in our part. As together we walk in the garden in the cool of the day. This was what God hoped for, an intimate relationship, walking hand in hand with his creation. But we only had one rule. Do not touch the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We usually call it the eye. Don't touch it. Leave it alone, because the day you do will be the day you will die. One rule. And one rule only. Now, tell me folks, if you have one rule, what are you going to do? Break it. Thank you, Dave. A man after my own heart. He, <laughs> we get it. One rule. We broke it. One rule and we turned from it and we ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the dream, God's dream, was broken. Because God came to the garden and didn't see his people. And called out, where are you? Now God knows. God knows. But where are you? And he hears a voice as the bushes rustle. And he hears a voice, very, very soft and timid and frightened, saying, We're hiding from you because we're naked. 
Who told you you were naked? Did you break the one rule I gave you? Yes. Well, the dream is broken. And life will not be the same. We were told we would die in the grace and the mercy of God. Hallelujah. We did not die. Life changed. We were cast out of the garden. We were forewarned that we would earn our bread by the sweat of our brow. We would discover pain in childbirth. We would not know the incredible joy of intimacy with God that we knew in the garden. The dream was ended. It wasn't us alone who left the garden that day. It was God who set out with us. The God of second chances was not going to just give up on us. And so God journeyed with us as we lived a life of toil. God was there with us. And when we stray, because now all of a sudden there's more than one rule, there's a whole lot of rules to follow, and we strayed from them. But God did not stray. As we turned, God sent poets and pastors and prophets to teach us the way to turn us back to that relationship. The dream was broken, but it didn't die. Salvation story, salvation history continues. Our God is the God of second chances. And so in the dream of God that is broken but not dead, God formulates another plan. And when the time was right, God did something incredible. God came to us. And the Word became flesh. Not some phantom image. Not some Greek god who steps down from the throne to walk upon the earth for a time. God became flesh and dwelt among us. God experienced everything we experience. God came as a baby, the most vulnerable of all. A baby who needs constant care and attention. A baby who needs to be fed at his mother's breast. A baby who needs his diapers changed. Not some mighty king. The most vulnerable of humans. A baby. This baby grew up as we grew up. This baby played. This child played as we played. This man learned to work and to live with other people as we learn to work and live with other people. This man suffered as we suffer. This man died as we die. Now you would think, if you stopped at Friday, you would think that we have no hope whatsoever. After all, we stopped to kill the dream. On that dark day in human history, we sought to end the dream of God as it hung upon the cross. Or did it end? Our God is the God of second chances. And this was part of the plan to fulfill the dream. And so three days later, the one who lived as we live, the one who knew joy as we know joy, the one who suffered as we suffer, the one who died as we died, rose from the grave. He experienced 
life as we experience it so that we might experience true life as he experienced it. Risen, conquered death. Our God, the God of second chances, was willing to take our worst and turn it into the best to make the dream come true. The dream still exists. God has not given up. And I can testify in my own personal life that God does not quit. Hallelujah. That the dream still lives. God calling to all of God's children, saying, I want to walk with you hand in hand. I don't want to be some distant God on the thrones in the heaven above, just looking down upon you where you can never see me. I want to walk in the garden in the cool of the day with you. I want my life to be your life. This is God's dream. It is the reason for the resurrection. And it is the call to us today, to all people, not just those who show up in church, not just those who would say Jesus is Lord, not just to those who believe that their own works can save them, to all people. That means to Christians, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, atheists. That means to those who are straight and those who are gay. That means to all of those that we believe would stand outside of the garden are called into it. Each and every one of us called into new joy. Each and every one of us called into new life. The dream, my friends, is alive. It is strong today because of the work of Jesus Christ. It is our call. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Amen. Oh, pray for me.